a simple letter of the alphabet that I had let define my life for years. It was when I was 16 that I began to first question my diagnosis. At 13, I was diagnosed with depression and hospitalized shortly after that diagnosis for a suicide attempt. Fast forward three years and a handful of antidepressants later and another trip to the hospital, I truly was a stereotypical 16-year-old mess, cutting school to smoke weed with people who didn't give a shit about me, tearing myself apart. How could this happen to me? I used to be a straight-A student, and it just didn't seem like this depression thing was going to go away on its own. By 16, I was confused. How could I feel so good one moment and then so bad the next? How could I see the beauty in the world and be excited to live one day and then ready to end my life the very next? The doctors didn't really want to stray from my diagnosis. You're depressed, they said. No doubt about that. Well, I didn't necessarily disagree. Surely these intensities were caused by something, and what other than horrible depression to cause them? But a few years and a few impulsive decisions later, the doctors also began questioning. And that's when the bees began. Have you ever been told you might be bipolar? The doctor asked. Well, my mom... Her mom, my sister, all have some form of bipolar, but I just don't think I fit the descriptions. My highs aren't high enough, and my lows, well, they're just too low. Something is wrong, and I know it isn't just depression. After another unwanted antidepressant that made me feel like a zombie, I decided to give therapy a break. I ran my life into a hole after that. Freshman year of college, spring term, I became a recluse again. My moods were spiraling so bad I couldn't muster the courage to even go out into the world. So I didn't. I stayed in my room, afraid that if I left I might burst into tears. I was lucky if I made it to about half my classes that semester. The doctors are convinced it's just anxiety, so they put me on a benzo and another daily medication called Buspar. That's where the bees began. And for a while I think I tricked myself into thinking it worked. I started to get my shit together. I returned to classes. And I even managed to get an all B grade semester when I came back. But it got bad again. And when it got bad, it got really bad. I fell apart entirely. My impulses were running wild and my moods were swinging from the high to the lowest low. I couldn't control myself. I was running on an autopilot, but like a shitty one. I finally found a doctor willing to discuss the possibility of my problems being more than just depression and maybe more than bipolar. We think you might have borderline personality disorder. I remember the words so clearly. For those of you that don't know, borderline personality disorder is a cluster B disorder, characterized by unstable, intense emotions. For the full DSM criteria, please check my text post. I had pretty much known since I was 18 that I was showing borderline traits and very likely had the disorder. But to be diagnosed with a personality disorder, and a cluster B one at that, was not something that doctors looked forward to doing. If you search borderline, you'll find a million resources about why you shouldn't trust us. You'll find more survivors of people who knew someone with BPD than you'll find actual BPD survivors. And that's what I was left dealing with in the back of my head for years. In years before I was diagnosed, it's what I thought. I thought, I'm a monster. People survive me, and all the denial from doctors to even discuss the possibility of having BPD just hurt me deeper. I felt like I should have been ashamed for existing. How dare I be scared of the world when it's the world that should be scared of me. I decided that I didn't want to be scared of being borderline. I don't want to be scared of an illness that I might be stuck with for the rest of my life. So instead, I'm going to be open about it, and I'm going to define the bees and not let them define me. I might have a cluster B disorder, but that doesn't mean that I can't be better. That doesn't mean that I can't do my best. And that doesn't mean that I can't be kind to myself. It might take some time and some practice for me, but I can get there. I can have friends, and I can go out, and I can do things, and I can exist just like everyone else. If you take nothing else away from this story, I hope that you take away a little bit of empathy for people around you. You never know what someone else might be fighting, 